Th this, these are the factors uh, which are also common to C A engines almost all of them, but in C A engines please note that the mixture itself is lean right. If we recall from our discussion on, uh, uh, on the combustion process and compression ignition engines uh, recall that C A engines are operated with linear mixtures in the first place. So, the hydrocarbon emissions become lower right because they are anyway operated with uh, linear mixtures right. Okay. So, of course, the factors that we have discussed for SA engines carry over to C A engines also. In addition to these reasons, in addition to the above factors or above causes, okay, a relatively less uh, homogeneous fuel air mixture would contribute to higher hydrocarbon emissions, right? Would result in higher H C because we do not burn the fuel properly right. So, if you do not have proper mixing of course, in modern C A engines due to high injection pressures you know like we are essentially having very good atomization and vaporization. So, this has been addressed to a certain extent right large extent and please note that the one of the most important things in diesel engines or C A engines that we are going to discuss shortly is the formation of soot okay, more than hydrocarbon due to the larger uh, molecular mass of the fuel compounds unburnt carbon okay, is a problem. Okay. So, carbon does not get oxidized and unburnt carbon which is obtained by when the hydrocarbon splits up right, is a significant uh, product in the exhaust of C A engines. Okay, we will come to that uh, shortly. Okay, yeah. so that's as far as uh, uh, hydrocarbon emission is concerned. Let's look at carbon monoxide emissions. Okay, so we are going to look at each gas one by one, and then like we are going to uh, relate, you know, like uh, how various factors affect these uh, emissions, right? So, if you look at carbon monoxide, it, it comes in uh, uh, what to say incomplete uh, what to say burning right incomplete combustion of course right because carbon is not fully oxidized to CO2 right. So, it is partially oxidized to CO right. So, carbon monoxide is a colorless and odorless gas and its formation typically happens with rich mixtures because when you have rich mixtures we have incomplete uh, combustion because we are going to have locally rich regions of fuel and uh, a both hydrocarbon emission is going to be a problem and carbon monoxide is also going to be an uh, issue. And please remember carbon monoxide formation is also uh, detrimental from an engine performance viewpoint because when carbon is fully oxidized to CO2 we get more heat energy. So, if it is partially oxidized to CO you know like we are essentially not retrieving know as much thermal energy as we could have potentially done right. So, that is also another aspects uh, aspect that we need to uh, look at and CO emission once again is relatively lower in uh, compression ignition engines for the same reason since they operate with a linear mixture.
Okay. So, that is that is as far as carbon monoxide is concerned. Okay. So, carbon monoxide as I mentioned you know like also represents uh, lost chemical energy that could have been converted. to thermal energy. So, that is one limitation all right. So, the next uh, co uh, uh, what to say component in the engine exhaust that we are going to look at is NOx ok. So, as we discuss we are going to have NO and NO2 under this uh, category. Uh, NO is what is called as nitrogen oxide right and NO2 is nitrogen dioxide. So, these are formed at high temperatures. So, NOx emission results at high temperatures in the cylinders at high temperatures diatomic nitrogen present in air okay, diatomic nitrogen breaks down into monoatomic nitrogen uh, reacts with O2 to form NOx. Okay. So, that is the chemistry behind it. So, what is the problem with NOx you know like NOx is also like uh, harmful for the environment right. So, when NOx in takes in energy from the sunlight it can essentially lead to NO plus O and smog ok and this o, what to say monoatomic oxygen when it reacts with the diatomic oxygen it leads to ground level ozone. Okay, ground level ozone is harmful. Okay, so so this is also not very safe, right? So you can see that NOx has all these uh, detrimental uh, effects. Of course, ground le level ozone is also formed when other emissions like hydrocarbons react with atmospheric gases. Okay, so that's not a very uh, uh, what to say safe thing. So, we can immediately see that we can decrease NOx by decreasing the cylinder temperature right. So, that is the way to do it, but then like we have already seen from engine analysis that if I decrease the peak temperatures what is going to happen to my engine performance? It reduces, it reduces right. So, there is a trade off between engine performance and NOx reduction all right. So, this is uh, what to say a uh, challenge for us because there is always a trade off between reducing NOx and uh, oops, engine power. Okay, so, that is something we need to keep in mind. Okay, so, we, we will lo also look at what are the various uh, emission control systems okay, shortly. Right. So, the next component that we would of the uh, engine exhaust are particulates matter. Okay, particulates are nothing but they are solid carbon particles. Okay, soot particles contained predominantly in the exhaust of C A engines, particularly when C A engines are operated with rich mixtures. So, one would see that particulates uh, uh, arise you know like when you when we observe a bus or a truck you know like which is starting from rest 
okay or even like let us say a bus slows down due to some whatever reason and it starts accelerating under load right we can see the black smoke coming out of the tail pipe right the exhaust pipe. So, that is those are the soot particles okay they are just carbon particles okay. So, essentially they are unburnt carbon particles you know like and uh, they come out of uh, C A engine exhaust uh, particularly when uh, we operate under uh, such operating conditions and it is of course harmful for the environment and it is commonly seen as uh, heavy exhaust smoke. Okay, when the vehicle accelerates under load, under load. Of course, we will also uh, discuss how these are addressed, right? So, using emission control, right? So, so under these conditions, as we already know, a rich mixture is used, right? During idling and uh, low speeds when we accelerate we need a rich mixture right. So, that is when this one. So, soot particles are clusters of carbon spheres unburned carbon they just collase they form this uh, carbon spheres and then they come out. So, how can we reduce these soot particles? If we allow more time for them in the combustion chamber and significantly increase the cylinder temperature, okay, then the uh, carbon will have more chances of getting oxidized. But what is the flip side? Nox, because if we burn and if you oxidize carbon, what is going to happen? We are going to release more heat energy. More the heat energy, more the cylinder temperature, and higher the cylinder temperature, larger is the potential for. Nox formation, right? So essentially, this is a trade-off, right? So if you want to oxidize this particulate matter by having more residence time in the combustion chamber, we can red, we can reduce soot particles, but that will lead to more uh, Nox formation. Okay? So we are going to discuss what is called as exhaust gas recirculation, okay? Which is uh, typically used to address this uh, what to say reduced particulates also okay like we will see how uh, uh, sorry partic uh, exhaust gas recirculation is used to decrease NOx but then like that has a counteracting effect on unburnt hydrocarbons and particulates okay we are going to uh, discuss that in the next class okay. So, but particulates one way is to also have higher injection pressure okay. So, people have figured out that if you increase the injection pressure what is going to happen? We are going to have finer fuel droplets okay they are going to be like a spray. So, better combustion right, but then this will reduce hydrocarbons and particulates. But then what can what happens? Nox formation is a problem. Okay. That is a question mark, right? So, because we have better combustion, you know, like better higher cylinder temperature, the potential for NOx is higher. Okay, that becomes a severe problem in C A engines. Okay. So, uh, we will see how uh, these are addressed. Okay. So, two more uh, components of engine exhaust. The first one is sulphur, right. So, sulphur is typically uh, uh, what is it present as part of the uh, fuel okay, mixture. So, uh, traces of sulphur can be found in uh, fuel. Okay. So, they get oxidized to form SO2 and SO3. Okay. 
and this SO2 and SO3 what happens is that they react with water vapor in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid and sulfurous acid okay. So, colloquially this is what is called as acid rain right. So, when it comes along with rain okay, we have what is called as acid right. So, that is the impact of sulphur you know like which is present in uh, the fuel right and comes out when it gets oxidized uh, it comes out right. Another important uh, component which has since now been addressed it is no longer there okay, uh, is the presence of lead. Okay. Lead was initially used tetraethyl lead TEL was added to gasoline to increase its octane number okay. So, if I increase the octane number what is the advantage no. So, I can use a, a petrol engines of a spark ignition engines of higher compression ratio I can get better efficiency right and so on. But however, it was then found <coughs> that lead has severe health hazards right. So, subsequently due to the health risks posed by lead in the engine exhaust okay a transition was made to unleaded gasoline so today we use unleaded gasoline or unleaded petrol okay for this uh, reason okay. So, I just wanted to introduce this as to why lead was added in the first place because to essentially increase octane number but now it is not there right. So, these are the various components of uh, engine exhaust. Uh, so, uh, what we have discussed is a just a broad overview of various components and what factors influence them right. And uh, in the next class we are looking at uh, how we can regulate them right, what are the various ways in which emissions can be controlled. So, that is something which we will uh, discuss in the next class okay, thank you.